Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people with real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 626 is with Kathy Higgins, CEO of Healthier Generation. Hello, Aaron. I'm great. How are you? Very, very interested in, in what you're what you're doing in the way that you're opening up our eyes. You're also educating and you're, you're you know, you're basically your outreach is to help you know, change people's lives. Well, making the impact is what our mission is all about, not just um, not just the outreach, but also uh, is anyone better off? And so we're really proud of the work that we're doing with Cole's Healthy at Home. Where are we going wrong? Is it the parents or is it the, the, the student that just basically thinks, you know, what the heck, I'm going to recycle everything in life. And if it looks like I'm going to reuse this over and over and over and over again, I'm OK. It's recycling. Well, I don't know about um, going wrong. It's just that there are so many factors of um, of any one of us, um, or in, especially in this case, children's environments, that um, impact their lives. And um, unfortunately, sometimes in many you know unfortunate or negative ways. And there's also uh, systemic barriers uh, for so, that are not supporting the growth, development, and health of children. And so our work is really dedicated to um, dismantling barriers, to making an impact, and providing the resources that we believe schools and families uh, need in order to help children thrive. You bring up a very interesting point. It it brings me back to my third grade teacher, Mrs. Steffeson, who used to say, how you keep your desk is how you keep your home. What does that say about you? And, and that, I mean, that's exactly what's going on in today's world is that if, if they're growing up in messy conditions, then their life may not be so perfect. Yeah, that's, um, we love, uh, when anyone on an interview will do a shout out to a former teacher and the positive impact that they've had in their lives. So thanks for doing that, Arrow. And um, what we know is that when we work at the district, at the school and the family level, um, we're really then entrenched uh, in a special way in the community and um, and able to work towards improving environments. And we, we, we refer to that as systems change, policy and practice change. And so that um, not only staff can be supported, but the children that they are leading are supported from uh, the continuum of family to school and back home. How do you practice change in a world where it feels like we're always being disciplined or judged? Um, well, we really feel like um, when we can help create model wellness policies in schools, as well as what we do with Cole's Healthy at Home is uh, provide the resources that we believe are really necessary for um, families to make changes, to think about topics like eating healthy, staying active, mental well-being, um, social emotional health, identifying stressful feelings and um, and ways of of dealing with those and um, that lead to positive outcomes that, you know, this is what um, Ultimately, we're all striving to have healthier lives, and um, and so we do really believe in the work that we're doing with Coles and our ability to support families for better health. And we also are quite happy with the fact that we get to work directly with schools, and nice. we um, are about to release a Healthy at Home playbook for schools to outline best class programs, policies, solutions for schools, solutions for family partnerships towards optimal children's health and and well-being. And um, what we know is that, um, and even as our own organization, we're always looking to best practices and how we can model after um, either evidence-informed or evidence-based work to make change. So. When we talk about the healthiest schools, I always have to kind of cringe on that because my wife being a school teacher, I mean, we've we've been into some really unhealthy schools and and it's usually kind of, Mm -hmm. you know, it can be a black white issue. And, you know, and and not always the white schools are the cleanest. But the thing is, is that how do you determine what is the healthiest school? Well, uh, we have uh, the America's Healthiest Schools Award Program, which actually has nine categories Um, that schools can apply for. And so from physical activity to nutrition to social emotional health and um, a number of other categories that allow them to think through 
um, where they are as an organization, um, where they are with their families, where they are with their children, and what are the changes that they want to um, to make. And so we support a role of Healthier Generation. Our organization is to support them in creating model wellness policies. And um, I, as a former teacher myself, I know firsthand that um, when we create policy and the guidance for practice change and the training and the support of staff wellness, mm -hmm. which is another key component of ours, and also tools and tips as well as information on how to engage the school with families, we create sort of that full circle of wellness that we feel um, ultimately drives um, better environments for the children. and we look for positive indicators that um, will help support the health of a child, which includes their academic achievement and, and attendance in school. And so what we know is that, you know, a healthy child will be a better student and more engaged in school. So and, um, and then therefore, um, we also know that we're supporting the health, the overall health of a family. Are you the go-between? And what I mean by that is, is that we all know that mental uh, health issues right now are at, at the highest ever, or it's be, maybe it's mm. be, being more spoken to about these days than any other time. But the thing is, though, to get that person that can help you, that could be a four-month late uh, uh, wait for that kind of a thing. Mm. Yeah. So our um, our support for families are one is to know what resources they could have immediately available to yeah. them as it relates to social emotional health or stressful situations or feelings that they're dealing with at, at home and even just their mental well-being. In schools, um, we're often working with schools in identifying, um, and we're recognized as a lead convener for many organizations. So whether it's schools or whether it's a school district on how to look at the resources within the community and making sure that Folks that are providing services, you address mental health um, uh, support, uh, could be right down the street, could be, you know, within the same zip code, and making sure that they're working together. And that could be opening up their school on um, during out-of-school time. It could be opening up their school on weekends. It could be just the sharing of information and resources. But we... We take great pride in our skill to convene um, like-minded organizations to better support families. How is AI technology changing you, or is it still maybe one-on-one -on -one with what you guys are doing? Because I know that with my wellness program, I, I swear I'm not talking with anybody. It's an a, it's got to be an AI, but yet the, the, it's going through my smartphone, and they're constantly checking in with me to find out how things are going. How are you guys doing that? Well, um, I mean, well said that AI technology is rapidly growing and um, and something that, you know, we've looked at from a, um, our own policy and, and practice environment, but um, it just, it's not something that I'm an expert in by any means. And, um, but as an organization, it's on our radar to understand either how we would uh, utilize it or how we would, um, how schools and families would benefit from it and how it then relates to our work. You know, in, in looking at the younger generation, one of the things that scares me, and maybe it's just because I'm an old fart, but I'll tell you what, the way that people and, the, and these young adults are doing prime energy drinks or they're doing power drinks, and I'm going, oh my God, the drinks that you guys are buying, people can go, go buy a beer for 75 cents, but yet you guys are drinking these big energy drinks. I don't know what that's doing to their to their arteries, to their body. And, and when we speak of physical health, I mean, that's got to be an, an instigator, a fire starter. Yeah, no, uh, you know, our work is centered around what is healthy for children. And so, um, you know, we're a big promoter of hydration and uh, and water over sugary drinks. And um, and that's certainly included in any of our um, wellness offerings. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for doing what you're doing because we really do need that little push because parents are looking in a different direction. And once again, we're not going to point fingers at the parent, but yet as my, my wife being that school teacher, she knew what was coming into her classroom each day. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, 
we we just find working holistically with families, with schools, and in communities is where we can um, we see the intersection of change really happening, happening, and and results being um, uh, achieved. And then that's when we know, did we actually make a difference? And then the answer is yes. So let me ask you this question. For some reason, this just this grew in my heart right now. So th- what about the people of homelessness with children? That, that I mean, there's, there are certain schools that will put them in a different section because they know they may be there one day. They may be there three days, but they still have got to educate those children. What about what you do with children yeah. at that level? Yeah, absenteeism is a major uh, issue and it's a major problem um, for families and schools across America. And it's a topic that is of real importance to us. And one of the things that we've been uh, working uh, to increase in our organization is how do we partner with similar organizations that care too about families, about children, but have a different approach to their work. And so an example would be how we partner with um, a nonprofits that focus on affordable housing uh, for families. And how do we then bring the work that we do around health and health resources to another organization that is focused on making sure that people have a roof over their head. And we know, you know, health, health does start at home and so um, having safe, affordable housing is um, important for everybody. And that would just be an example where housing isn't what we do, but it's how we partner. Wow. Where can people go to find out more about what you're doing, Kathy? Yeah, thanks for asking. So our website is healthiergeneration.org and our social media handle on X is healthy, healthier gen. Let me say that again. Our Social media handle on X is Healthier Gen, and on Facebook and Instagram, it's Healthier Generation. And you can visit ColesHealthyAtHome.org for more information or to learn to how to access our free resources through the Healthy at Home program. I love it. I love it. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I love that. Same here. And I thank you for, you know, you're a big part to change. Um the uh, media and communications and lifting up this information for folks really matters. So thank you. You'd be brilliant today. Okay. Okay. You too.